What if everything you thought you knew about Yellowstone's next eruption was wrong? What if the apocalyptic visions of ash clouds blotting out the sun and cities buried under meters of volcanic fallout were nothing more than a distraction from the real story the ground itself is telling? Could it be that the world's most famous supervolcano is not preparing for a civilization-ending blast at all, but something far more ordinary and far less understood? The popular narrative is simple, frightening, and endlessly repeated. Yellowstone is overdue for a super-eruption. The phrase alone evokes dread, as if the ground beneath Wyoming were a ticking time bomb waiting to erase modern civilization. But scientists insist this is not what the data shows. The weight of new satellite observations, paired with decades of meticulous monitoring, points instead to a system that is alive but not dangerous in the way headlines suggest. The next eruption, when it eventually arrives, will likely be a very different event than most people imagine. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, or YVO, has stressed repeatedly that the Hollywood apocalypse scenario is not supported by evidence. Yellowstone's more recent eruptions were not continent-scale cataclysms, but far smaller, effusive lava flows that crept across the land. Those flows, made of thick, silica-rich rhyolite, last appeared roughly 70,000 years ago. Even at their most vigorous, they were insignificant in scale compared to the ancient caldera explosion 631,000 years ago. The long-term pattern is unmistakable. Yellowstone erupts in clusters and then enters prolonged quiescent periods that can last tens of thousands of years. By all reasonable indicators, the system is now in one of those extended intervals of calm. Modern seismic imaging reinforces this picture. Tomographic studies, which function like a medical scan of Earth's crust, reveal Yellowstone's magma system in two tiers, a shallow rhyolitic reservoir stretching from about 5 to 19 kilometres below the surface and a deeper basaltic sill at depths of 20 to 50 kilometres. But the crucial detail is that the melt fraction in these zones is tiny, well below 10% of the volume. That means the magma chamber is not a vat of liquid fire, but mostly crystalline mush with only scattered melt pockets. Any new magma entering the system would have to navigate a maze of solidified rock, stripping it of the explosive potential often assumed by the public. Satellites and GPS stations confirm this calm subsurface picture, by measuring the surface itself. Continuous GPS receivers anchored around the caldera show a clear long-term trend of subsidence. The ground is slowly sinking rather than swelling at only a few centimetres per year. Superimposed on that are small seasonal cycles, a rise in spring as snowmelt infiltrates the ground, followed by gradual settling as the water drains away or freezes. In the summer of 2025, Yellowstone's ground rose by just one centimetre relative to the preceding winter, a trivial pulse perfectly in line with natural hydrological cycles. The caldera is not swelling under hidden pressure. It is breathing with the seasons. Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, or INSAR, adds another dimension. This satellite-based technique uses radar echoes from orbit to detect tiny ground shifts over vast areas. By comparing radar images from two separate passes, scientists can track movements as small as millimetres across hundreds of square kilometres. At Yellowstone, repeated INSAR analyses from the European Space Agency's Sentinel-1 mission corroborate the GPS data. Deformation is minimal, patchy, and consistent with groundwater changes, old landslide creep, or snowmelt cycles. Nowhere is there evidence of runaway uplift that would indicate a swelling magma body preparing to rupture. The next generation of satellite monitoring has already arrived. NASA and ISRO successfully launched their joint NISAR-NASA-ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar Satellite on the 30th of July, 2025, aboard India's GSLV F-16 rocket from the Satish Dhawan Space Center. Within days, the spacecraft unfurled its record-breaking radar antenna, a 39-foot reflector, the largest of its kind in orbit. NISAR is the first satellite to carry both L-band and S-band synthetic aperture radars, giving it the unique ability to penetrate vegetation, snow and cloud cover while detecting ground shifts as slight as a centimetre. Having completed its commissioning phase, NISAR is entering full science operations late in 2025. 
Publicly accessible data will sharpen our ability to monitor Yellowstone's ground motions, ensuring that even the faintest anomaly is spotted, analysed and placed in context. Thermal imaging satellites provide another angle on the story. Instruments aboard Landsat 8 and Terra Aster capture infrared emissions, mapping Yellowstone's geothermal features as glowing patches against a cooler backdrop. The hydrothermal basins consistently register as 20 to 30 degrees Celsius hotter than their surroundings. Changes occur gradually, sometimes over years, not in sudden leaps. One striking example came from a long-term analysis of Landsat archives, which revealed the quiet emergence of a new eight-acre thermal zone near the Sour Creek Dome around 2001. Such discoveries underscore how Yellowstone evolves not through violent upheaval, but through slow, measured adjustments in its hydrothermal system. Airborne LIDAR surveys add fine-scale detail by stripping away trees and vegetation to expose the true shape of the land. With centimetre accuracy, LIDAR has revealed prehistoric landslides, subtle fault scarps, and earthquake traces previously invisible beneath the forest. A USGS study mapped about 1,800 ancient landslides across the region, then used INSAR to monitor their behaviour between 2017 and 2021. Only about 200 of them were still moving at all, and even then the rates were modest and localised. Again, the lesson is that the surface changes seen today are the natural continuation of long-term geological processes, not harbingers of catastrophic volcanic reawakening. Meanwhile, Yellowstone continues its low-level seismic chatter. In August 2025, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory catalogued 94 earthquakes, the largest a modest magnitude 3.7. For perspective, Californians experience tremors of that size regularly without alarm. These quakes generally occur in swarms, many linked to shifting fluids in the hydrothermal system rather than magma intrusion. Alongside them, only a single minor hydrothermal event was recorded that month, a muddy burst at Black Diamond Pool that reached just one metre high. Far from signalling disaster, such events are par for the course in a hydrothermal system as vast and complex as Yellowstone's. Even the park's most famous geyser steamboat has quieted. After several years of spectacular eruptions that captured global attention, Steamboat has retreated to modest steaming and just two major bursts in 2025. Its activity levels, while fascinating, are not unusual in the context of Yellowstone's history. Volcanologists stress that geysers operate on their own fluid and pressure cycles, independent from deeper magmatic conditions. Seismic imaging research published in 2023 added yet more clarity. Using advanced methods, Farrell and colleagues mapped the shallow magma chamber with remarkable resolution. They determined that only 14% of the upper chamber is molten or gas-filled, while a commanding 86% is crystalline rock. Crucially, the system is leaky. Most volcanic gases are able to escape through Yellowstone's immense network of hot springs and fumaroles. In the words of lead scientists, volatiles exsolve, they bubble out and then escape to the surface rather than being trapped beneath a sealed roof. This constant bleeding off of gases prevents the build-up of pressure that would be necessary for a super-eruption. Each of these data sets, GPS, INSAR, thermal imaging, LIDAR, seismic tomography, converges on a single conclusion. Yellowstone is not primed for a catastrophic event. Its magma chamber is mostly frozen, its surface signals are modest and stable, and its hydrothermal system is venting gases steadily. The physics are simple. Without a massive trapped bubble of magma and gas, an explosive eruption cannot occur. Instead, the next eruption, whenever it finally comes, will most likely resemble the park's geologically recent past, sluggish rhyolite lava flows or small localized steam blasts, not global catastrophe. The persistence of the doomsday narrative raises unsettling questions. Why, despite decades of careful research, does the myth of Yellowstone's impending cataclysm continue to dominate public imagination? Why do ordinary seasonal pulses in the ground become viral stories of looming disaster? The scars of past super-eruptions are so vast, so overwhelming, that people instinctively project them into the future. But data-driven science insists on a different story, one grounded in measurements rather than fear. 
And with each passing year, satellites and seismic instruments are writing that story with sharper precision. Yet despite the scientific consensus, Yellowstone's reputation as a doomsday clock refuses to fade. Every cluster of earthquakes, every geyser eruption, every shift in ground elevation is seized upon by social media and magnified into evidence of imminent catastrophe. The truth is less cinematic, but more important. Yellowstone is an active volcanic system, yes, but it is behaving exactly as it should and it is one of the most closely watched volcanoes on Earth. The monitoring framework around Yellowstone is nothing short of extraordinary. Hundreds of instruments are permanently installed across the park and its surroundings. GPS receivers, seismometers, gas analyzers, thermal cameras and tilt meters. Satellites overhead supplement this ground-based network with wide area coverage. The result is a living laboratory where data flows constantly, where even a centimetre of uplift or a fraction of a degree in surface temperature is recorded and analysed. No volcanic system on the planet is tracked with such vigilance, and none has its signals interpreted with greater caution. This vigilance is not just for science, it is also about public safety. The U.S. Geological Survey and Yellowstone Volcano Observatory issue monthly updates carefully explaining what the data shows. In the summer of 2025, those updates noted the 94 small earthquakes, the modest one centimeter seasonal uplift, and the subdued geyser activity. There was no euphemism, no downplaying, no alarmism, just the facts as they stand. Scientists are well aware of the fear that Yellowstone's name provokes, and they respond by grounding their public communication in transparency and evidence. And yet here lies the paradox. The more scientists emphasize that Yellowstone is stable, the more popular culture insists on the opposite. Fear sells. Apocalyptic speculation generates clicks, views and headlines. The phrase supervolcano carries a cinematic power that eclipses the mundane reality of slow lava flows or minor geyser bursts. For many, it is easier to believe in catastrophe than in patience. This is where the satellites become crucial, not just as scientific tools, but as cultural correctives. Each radar map from Sentinel-1, each thermal image from Landsat, each LIDAR survey that strips away the forest canopy becomes a data point in a counter-narrative. Yellowstone is not on the brink. The system is breathing, shifting, cooling, leaking gas, and living out its geological cycles. The more these data sets are shared and understood, the harder it becomes for fear-mongering to dominate. NISAR represents a leap forward in this battle between myth and measurement. By delivering dual-frequency radar imagery with unmatched consistency, NISAR allows scientists to peel back noise and see Yellowstone's surface as never before. When fused with global data sets, it ensures that if any anomaly ever does emerge, if the ground starts rising faster than seasonal snowmelt can explain, if a hydrothermal zone suddenly heats beyond normal bounds, it will be spotted instantly. And because these data sets are public, anyone with the right tools can examine them. The transparency is built in. But even with the most advanced satellites, the hard truth remains. Nature does not run on human timelines. The next eruption of Yellowstone could be thousands of years away. Or it could come sooner in a small, localized event that affects only a fraction of the park. What it will not be, according to every line of evidence, is a sudden global catastrophe. Super eruptions are exceedingly rare and they require very specific conditions, a large volume of molten magma, a sealed chamber trapping volcanic gases, and a build-up of pressure that exceeds the strength of the overlying crust. None of those conditions exist in Yellowstone today. Instead, scientists expect any future eruption to resemble its more recent past. Thick rhyolite lava could ooze slowly across the caldera floor, covering a few square kilometres but travelling at a crawl that gives ample time for evacuation. Steam blast eruptions triggered when water flashes to vapour could punch small craters into the landscape, ejecting mud and debris but not threatening life far beyond their immediate vicinity. Both scenarios are disruptive, yes, but they are not civilization ending They are part of the natural rhythm of an active volcanic system, a reminder that Earth is alive beneath our feet. Understanding this distinction is not just an academic exercise, it shapes how society prepares how resources are allocated, how risk is communicated. 
If the public believes Yellowstone is on the verge of apocalyptic detonation, it may undermine trust in real warnings about smaller, more likely events. Conversely, by grounding expectations in data, by showing that Yellowstone is stable, that satellites see only modest seasonal breathing, scientists can foster resilience without hysteria. The irony is that in debunking the myth of imminent doom, Yellowstone becomes no less fascinating. The world's largest geyser field, the sprawling hydrothermal basins, the interplay of magma, water and rock, all of it offers insights into Earth's inner workings. Satellites and seismic arrays are not just keeping us safe, they are also unravelling mysteries about how continents breathe, how heat escapes from Earth's interior, and how life thrives in extreme environments. Yellowstone is a window into planetary processes that extend far beyond Wyoming, and the data collected here informs how scientists interpret volcanoes everywhere from Iceland to Indonesia. So when the next headline screams that Yellowstone is waking up, the real question should not be, are we doomed? But what does the data actually say? And right now, the answer is steady, consistent and reassuring. Yellowstone is active but not dangerous in the way the world fears. Its magma chambers are mostly solid, its gases are venting freely, and its ground is moving only with the gentle rhythm of seasons. This is the power of satellite science, to replace fear with facts, to trade myth for measurement. Yellowstone is not the ticking time bomb it is made out to be. It is a living system, a reminder of Earth's dynamism, and a monument to the patience of geological time. The next eruption will not be what you think. And that truth, backed by satellites, seismic data and relentless observation, is a story worth spreading. If you found this investigation insightful, make sure to like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to tap that hype icon to help spread awareness and ensure more people understand the real story of Yellowstone. Not the myths, but the science.